Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video we're going to be discussing how to integrate a relay system into your UC CNC software. And when I say integrate it, I'm discussing for the G540. You can see here's the G540 drive. We've got our switching power supply and again dealing with the 36 to 48 volt. 98 percent of you hopefully will be using 48 volt to get maximum speed. Um, here is the diagram for your VFD. Now the VFD we're discussing is typically HY. If you're using another brand of VFD, keep in mind the connections are, as, are pretty much identical. The big thing you want to validate with your VFD's manual is you want to make sure that the terminology used on your terminal blocks are the same. So you'd validate DCM, FOR, ACM, 10 volt, and V1. If they are worded differently or if you have confusion, always contact your vendor of the VFD and get confirmation prior. The best way to do that is take a snippet of the video right here in this, in this perimeter. This way you can send them what you're looking at or even take a whole snapshot of what you're looking at right here and send it to them and say, I need help differentiating your VFD to these settings and they should be able to help you if they are a quality vendor. We know that those are hit and miss. So be careful, of course, uh, prior. But let's go into detail in how this is done and done correctly. Um, I've gotten asked numerous times about this and I wanted to formulate a diagram that not only had the diagram but also the settings uh, for the actual software. It's a very, very simple process. You can see here on the G540 you have two outputs available. They are terminal pins 5 and 6. For this configuration, we are using terminal pin 5. If you come over here, again, it's pretty self-explanatory. We have VFD to G540 wiring, G540 terminal, and it says 5 to relay signal in. You can see the green associated with the green coming into the actual signal of the relay. So it comes from 5 over, boom. Now, again, and I cannot reiterate this enough, orientation of the relay must be in the orientation illustrated for correct wiring. So you'll naturally physically turn the relay to match this configuration. If you require a relay, contact me and I can send you uh, a link to or either create a listing or just send you a PayPal invoice for the relay you require. Um, you will also require a GX16 six pin connectors, what I recommend. This way we can make it so that you will be able to manipulate your speed and control your relay from one cable. That'll take up a lot less real estate in your enclosure. And again, the cable is, of course, double shielded. The integration of it, very, very simple if you're familiar with soldering. And again, we'll try to keep it as simple as possible uh, with the wiring right here. So what you've got here, once again, five is going to be to relay signal in. And in the G540's case, it's actually the output of it. So and when I say uh, signal in, I'm discussing signal into the relay. So output coming from G540 to signal in on the relay. Uh, pin 7 on the G540 is going to VFD terminal ACM. So you're going to come over here to the ACM connection, and you're going to go from pin 7. Pin 8 on the G540 to VF terminal VI. You'll come over here. Once again, boom. I mean, it's pretty simple. I mean, this is very, very self-explanatory. Pin 9 to VFD terminal 10 volt done and then normally open on the relay to VFD terminal DCM so again DCM and normally open is over here once again and again normally open now just to, to reiterate this relay will be configured as you see here in a dry contact format now what that simply means is that you're simply powering the relay with the 48 volt signal in but what you're not doing is generating any voltage out. It's simply closing a circuit. Normally open, naturally, and when it's triggered, it closes, and therefore that's what will, uh, in turn, cycle on the actual spindle. So again, keep that in mind. No voltage coming out, but voltage going into the relay is how we actually stimulate it, of course, to actually function. So, but overall, all we're doing is closing a circuit. That is the term for dry contact connection, just so everybody's aware. UC CNC settings, once again, really simple. I even give you a screenshot. Um, you can see here the relay setting uh, is, as far as actually setting up, check the box, spindle relay output enable. 
M3 relay pin is 17 port 1. Now, I highlighted down here, with some VFDs, active low must be set. If you have no joy, try this setting. Now, that is true. Uh, certain times you will find that the active low setting must be set. Other times you don't. Again, it, there's too many variables involved in, in how many VFDs are on the market to differentiate. So the best thing to do is try one format. If it doesn't work naturally, trial and error. Try the second format and see if you have joy. Um, Overall, check the box with the PWM spindle naturally. Uh, PWM pin 14 port 1. Of course, PWM control is going to be for your 10 volt input going into the actual VFD. And that's how we actually control our RPM. It's coming from pin 9 on the G540, runs over to pin 10. And all it does is stimulate a voltage from 1 to 10 volts. And the lower the voltage, the lower the RPM of the spindle. The higher the voltage generated, up to 10 volts, the maximum RPM of the spindle. Very simple. Again, I'm not going into rocket science here. I want to keep it as basic as possible. The big thing is, is that you guys understand, and I've clarified this in numerous videos. I've discussed it with numerous potential clients and past clients. If you're going to control your spindle's RPM through whatever software, be it UCC and C or Mach 3, and you do not have an encoder, which is essentially a tachometer, you will not have an accurate, 100% accurate display of your RPM. It will be close. Now, in certain substrates, not a big deal. As you become more familiar with, you know, trickier substrates, it can become a bigger issue. So just keep that in mind if you're manipulating your speed. If you're dealing with wood and stuff like that, not usually a big headache. Again, if you go too fast with wood or too slow, you can have your headaches. But overall, just for full disclosure, Never believe you're going to get 100% accuracy in RPM unless you're using a tachometer, henceforth encoder. Okay. So other than that, you can see here PWM frequency 50, PWM minimum, minimum duty 30, max 100. Uh, spindle velocity is 7200, max of course is 2400 or 24,000, excuse me. And that would just symbolize the RPM. Um, overall, this is your startup point. I mean, this will get you going as far as getting everything set up. And again, I wanted to keep the, the actual diagram as simple as possible. Now, if you guys require this, I will, of course, send it to you free of charge. Um, I can tell you right now, and many of you already know, this is pretty much a priceless display because of the simple fact that most of these diagrams are not online in the simplest format. I tried to make this as simple as possible, and in doing the video overview, I don't really see uh, you guys having any issues. The one thing I want to make specifically clear, and I've said this in previous videos as well, double shielded cable for any signal control must be utilized. Okay, I know in this diagram you see the G540 here and the wiring diagram shows it simply going to the relay and then of course going to the VFD's block. Don't forget, and I don't know why this occasionally happens, actually more than occasionally, it seems that end users seem to think that they just run this straight to the VFD with no interconnections as far as for enclosure pass-through. That's where the GX16 comes from. That's where doing everything right where we formulate a cable connection so it passes through the enclosure properly, goes to our relay for the ability once again to not only cycle on the, the actual spindle but also integrate RPM or speed control for the spindle. So again, Double shielded cable is highly recommended. You can get away with shielded cable, but you're only going to tackle one end of the frequency spectrum as far as EMI. Uh, once again, double shielding is the bulletproof prospect when it comes to actually doing this right the first time, so to speak. Um, and again, for the cost difference, it's not much. Um, but again, if you guys need that, if you need that setup, let me know. I can hook you up as far as with the actual uh, relay and also with all of the cabling that's associated with it. And I can, of course, custom length it so you're never stuck buying more than you need. The big thing here is that you understand what we're actually doing, and I feel that this pretty much covers it all. Now, one other key point I want to point out is that the jumper on your VFD needs to be placed on the left, so be placed on the VI. You can see it over here. Okay. If I need to zoom this in, I can. And once again, I did a high-resolution image of this, so if you do want it sent to you naturally, I can send it to you. Of course, if you request, uh, excuse me, request a relay kit, I will naturally send this to you because I know it'll save you a lot of time. So you'll be all set with that. So again, guys, I hope this video has been helpful. 
Um, the one caveat I have with UCCNC, and I've discussed this too uh, with previous clients and potential clients, uh, just for full disclosure, it's great software, but um, it is based in Hungary, so you're always dealing with a time constraint as far as getting support back. So just keep that in mind. It is excellent software. It works great, especially if you're familiar with motion control. Excellent software. Big thing is just keep in mind you're always dealing with, you know, email contacts. There is no real direct line, or at least there hasn't been. Um, there may be now. I don't know. I honestly have not tried, but for the most part, it's always been through direct email support. So getting in touch, if you're running a business, and this is the, the one caveat I always discuss, if you're running a business, time is of the essence. And we all know things usually occur at the worst possible time. Keep that in mind that you are dealing typically with full email support. So their time zone is different. You may send an email today and they may not hear back two, three days. We don't know, especially if there's a weekend involved. I mean, I, I'm proud of myself that I'm one of the few vendors that actually answer on the weekend. All my clients and potential clients will tell you that. I, I pride myself on that because I realize your time is as valuable as mine. And if I'm there to support you the way I should and you're there to support me, then I need to make myself available. That's just part of the responsibility I've taken. So again, I hope the video has been helpful. Um, again, if you have questions or require custom, custom quotes for whatever, uh, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com or you can message me through my eBay store. Once again, the links will be in the description below um, and you'll be all set. Thank you guys for your support.